You're looking at uh, a, a 2021 Curtis Jenny. This uh, aircraft was built from scratch uh, in a, uh, a combined effort with the Poplar Grove Vintage Wings and Wheels Museum and EAA Chapter 1414. Uh, it was a five-year build project, about 22,000 man hours. First of all, it's the first mass-produced airplane. It's an iconic airplane. But the other reason is because it met the mission of the museum, and this fit right in there. Well, the Jenny community is, uh, is pretty close. We had a lot of help from a number of other Jenny operators and builders. We, were also, uh, we also purchased a, a set of uh, original Jenny drawings, and those drawings uh, guided us through the entire project. Volunteers started to come in, and uh, each volunteer self-selected what they wanted to do. I didn't give them any instruction on what to do, and I, and I like that, you know, because this way they show their own interest in, in doing it. Uh, the majority of us are not aircraft builders. You know, that's obviously a challenge. Uh, uh, having uh, the four primary builders, but then another dozen or so people who either did some work from their own shops or they did uh, work here when we needed extra sets of hands for hanging wings or, you know, large projects or rib stitching. Um, we just had a ton of help from the community in the area. Don Perry, who was the lead on the project, uh, made sure that there was work to do every time you came in, made sure materials were here, uh, drawings were available, and uh, you know, was able to uh, set the project up for, for success. The uh, role that I had initially was to help build the fuselage. So Steve Langdon and myself, we built the fuselage on a table that was built by the team. And part of that challenge was to bend ash that is part of the Langeron. If you look at the front of the airplane to the back, it's one continuous piece of wood that's actually spliced right in the middle. Then the ash, we had to put it in a steam box and put it in a jig, let it dry overnight. It's an accomplishment that I'm very proud of. You know, if you look at the pictures of the airplane before it was covered, it looks like a giant model airplane, which I used to build as a kid. That's what got me interested in this project to begin with. But there's a lot of artwork and just the frame itself that it gets covered up. Yeah, the, uh, the burnishing was something that they did back in the early days to kind of hide the, uh, the milling on the, the sheets. Uh, what we did was um, we developed a template with overlapping circles, and then we laid out a grid uh, up from the bottom to the top, and we would lay our template on, and then with a, use a two-inch uh, Scotch-Brite pad on the end of a drill in a drill guide thousands and thousands of times. We're very, very satisfied with the, uh, the finish. Just trying to decide what kind of engine we wanted, we decided on an OX-5 and the original overhaul facility couldn't take the engine, so I brought up during a meeting that we should be able to do it ourselves with all the assets and personnel we have available, so I was basically voluntold to be the engine overhaul guy. We found one in Oklahoma, I believe, that was about 80% there. It's hard to find a complete 100-year-old engine. Well, the first time it flew, I think we all had a little tear in our eye. I mean, it was five years of our lives uh, that we had devoted to uh, seeing this project through. Uh, Don said that uh, he felt like he was having another child, so uh, it, was a, it was a real emotional moment last uh, fall. We flew in November, several flights, and unfortunately we had to put it away for the winter, but it gave us time to make some adjustments and changes. And then uh, now in the spring, uh, we're flying as often as the weather will allow us. And uh, every time it goes up, we're, we're excited. A couple of evenings ago, it was it was fairly smooth, even though it was windy down on the surface, up of three or four hundred feet in the air, it was is very smooth, and you can kind of relax, and then it flies pretty normally. So, you know, it amazes me every time I see one of those videos of somebody out walking on the wing, or uh, I don't even know how you get on the wing. It, it's amazing that the airplane stayed in the air while they were doing all that.
Very important, you know, the museum is a nonprofit organization and uh, because, uh, because of that, this museum, uh, the Jenny uh, aircraft is a nonprofit uh, uh, operation, so we need funds to uh, keep it going. And you'd want to keep something like this flying to show the younger generations uh, what uh, aviation was like uh, way back at the beginning. Well, we kind of want to uh, continue to bring it to people. Uh, we want people to learn about it. Um, so uh, we're doing outreach programs with kids, with uh, A&P schools, things like that, to come out, look at the airplane, uh, see what we've done over the last five years, and, uh, and watch it fly, and get a taste of the history of early aviation uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm.